you thought I was going to come out of that door like yesterday? No, that would be lazy and predictable. And I'm just lazy. I'm not predictable. Come with me. Come on. Welcome back to the vlog. Guten Morgen, lovely humans of the internet. It's early, it's like 7 a.m. I'm going to the doctor's office right now to see the best doctor in Germany, Dr. Boomi. But if you've been watching my vlog for a long time, you know that I love the mornings and I hate the evenings. I said this in my second ever vlog, just because there's something about the mornings. There's so much potential for the day. You could do anything. So I always feel my best early in the morning. All right, here we go. Let's have a good day. Okay, productive morning so far. Went to the doctor, got some physio treatment, went to the apotheke, got some uh, prescriptions, medicine. Then I went to the Vital House or Sanitat House. And I got this compression leg sleeve to put over my calf. Good start to the day. Can you see this? Swaggy leg sleeve compression. Kind of blends into my skin. I was gonna put on pants, but I'm gonna wear shorts and see if people notice that I'm wearing this sleeve. Okay, now I'm at one of my favorite cafes in Schwäbisch Hall, Suite 21, to do some work on the documentary that I've been talking about for like two years. Still doing work on that. Okay, I finished what I'm working on this morning. I'm uploading it so I can send it away to some people to look at. And while I wait, I'm going to read a book because I am a smart human being, unlike Gary Yeager, who can't read? Guy can raise money for charity, but uh, he can't read, so cool. Anyway, this is an awesome book. If you haven't read it, I recommend it. I actually just read a fascinating chapter in that book, Outliers, and I'm going to talk about it and summarize it in a little bit. I hope I don't butcher it. But first, lunch. Yeah, Personal right space. Right. Ooh, yeah, no. Get, get used to that. I made a video about that yesterday. Okay, let's see if I can explain this without butchering it because I think it's absolutely fascinating. Okay, basically, uh, there's a chapter in this book that talks about how Korean Air, the airline out of Seoul, South Korea, experienced a disproportionately large number of crashes during like the 1990s, I think. Like they had way more airplane crashes than any other airline to the point where like Canada and the USA were banning them from flying uh, in their airspace and into their airports. Now, I'm gonna butcher this guy's name, but Dutch psychologist Geert Hofstede. This guy worked in the human resource department of uh, IBM's European headquarters. So this dude's job was to travel the world and interview IBM employees in all different countries throughout the world to figure out things such as how people solve problems, how they work together, and what their attitudes towards authority 
work. So this dude, Hofstede's research concluded that South Korea had an extremely, extremely high power distance index, meaning South Korean people really respect authority and hierarchy and you're not supposed to speak out of turn and people are very clearly superior and inferior in certain social situations. Taking us back to the crashes that Korean Air experienced. And so they found after researching these crashes and figuring out uh, everything that went wrong, that the reason that most of these crashes happened were because the pilot, the captain of the plane was doing something incorrectly. The first officer noticed it, but was too afraid or felt uncomfortable speaking up in the situation instead of being direct and saying, you're doing this wrong, we're going to crash, you know, we need to do this, we need to do this. The first officers would instead hint at it because they respected the hierarchy and authority so much they didn't want to speak out of turn. And most of these crashes that Korean Air experienced were due to that cultural dynamic. And so after uh, the airline experienced all these crashes, they brought somebody in and they really changed their whole cockpit culture uh, to avoid the situation. But I thought it was absolutely fascinating that these crashes could be chalked up to something like that. This dude Hofstede's uh, research uh, that he gathered over many years, he uh, broke down into five different categories um, and characteristics of countries. And they are power distance, what I was just talking about, individualism, masculinity, uncertainty avoidance, long-term orientation, and indulgence. Guess which country scored the absolute highest on individualism? The good old US of A. There's this really cool website called the HofsteedInsights.com. I'll put the link in the description. And basically on the website, you can um, compare any two countries or any number of countries, however many you want to, uh, compare the results um, for these different categories. So you can see, all right, the US scores 91 on individualism um, and Germany scores 67 on individualism. Uh, Long-term orientation, Germany scores 83, the US scores 26. It's really fun to play around with this and compare different countries, different types of social, uh, cultural things. I think one of the most fascinating discrepancies between the United States and Germany is the long-term orientation. Germany scored so high and the USA scored so low which kind of makes sense to me. I mean, it seems like German people are really always thinking about the future, um, being smart with money, or careful and calculated, and things seem pretty planned out, like not too spontaneous. Whereas uh, Americans, and I feel this way, I really feel this way, I feel like I don't think about the future like at all. And anytime I travel, I, I book it like the week before. What I also think is really fascinating is the individualism scores. Like the USA got the highest individualism score um, and they talked about it in the book how USA has the highest score on individualism and is the only uh, Western uh, industrialized country that doesn't provide uh, universal health care to its citizens. So I thought that was pretty interesting. We've got this individualist uh, attitude in the state that's kind of just like, you know, you know, fend for yourself, take care of yourself, which is uh, good in some things and bad in some things. But I, I really feel that way. Like, I feel very individualistic. Um, I feel like I need to do everything myself. I need to take care of myself. And, and my fate and future and success is all dependent upon me. And I really, really feel like that. What I want you guys to do is check out this website. This is not sponsored or anything. I just think it's really, really interesting. Check out this website, type in your country, compare it to some other countries, and let me know any uh, interesting insights that you gained or things that surprised you uh, comparing some different cultural attitudes and tendencies between certain countries. And, and another thing I wanna say is human beings are basically the same all over the world. People want the same thing, they wanna be happy, they want uh, to be healthy, they want their family to be happy and healthy, all this stuff. Humans all across the world are very, very similar in a lot of these things, but I just think some of these cultural country differences are so, so interesting. How does the history of a country, uh, going back hundreds and hundreds of years, affect how its citizens behave today? I think that's so, so cool and interesting. And I think it's awesome that we have these different tendencies all around the world, okay guys? So what I want you to do is plug in some of these countries, plug in your country, compare it to the States, compare it to Germany, compare it to whatever, whatever you think is interesting. And let me know some interesting insights that you find in the comments, okay guys? That is your homework. Do your homework. We're trying to get smart here, okay? I'm very interested and I await your response.